What's up everyone, my name's Robbie. This is Robbie in Manila, and today we're talking about the best utility sector ETFs. This is the third video in a series I'm doing about the best ETFs in each sector. The stock market is made up of 11 different sectors, and each sector has its own potential ETF that you can invest in. Why would you want to invest in a sector ETF? Well, there's a lot of different reasons. We're talking about utilities today, and utilities are generally not as volatile of investments as maybe, for example, the information technology sector. But of course, the information technology sector has a lot more growth potential than the utility sector, but the utility sector will likely pay higher income or higher dividends. So depending on what type of sectors you're interested in investing in, utilities might be a good one for you. How has the utility sector done in the past? Well, we'll take a look here and we can see in this visual chart that utilities underperformed in 2020 the overall S&P 500, which had an 18.4% return, utilities having 0.5% return. In 2019, utilities had a good year of 26.4% return, but the S&P 500 did much better with a 31.5% return. And year to date, utilities are the lowest returning of all of the different sectors. But the thing is, a lot of people don't invest in the utility sector just for growth, of course. You do it because you don't really want much volatility and you probably want some income. So I'll be going over five different sector ETFs in this video, trying to find the best sector ETF for the utility sector. Once I find the best ETF, I'm going to compare it to the S&P 500 just to see how it's done. Then I'm gonna do a little bit of technical analysis on it and see how the charts look. So let's go ahead and let's get started. All right, let's get into this. Now, I wanna hear from you in the comments below. Let me know, are you investing in utilities? And let me know why. Do you like income? Do you like that maybe there's a little bit less volatility? Let me know why you're investing in utilities. I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Like I said, at the start of this video, we'll be going over five different utility sector ETFs. Now let's go ahead and let's begin. So the ETFs we'll be going over today include the Vanguard Utility Index ETF shares, which is VPU. The Fidelity MSCI Utilities Index ETF, which is ticker FUTY. The Utilities Select Sector Spider Fund, which is ticker XLU. The First Trust Utilities Alphadex Fund FXU. And finally, Invesco S&P 500 Equally Weighted Utilities RYU. Here we have a comparison of the five different ETFs I just mentioned. So one column, FPU here, FT, FUTY here, XLU here, and so on. First thing I'm gonna do is start with the expense ratio of these funds. So for VPU, we have an expense ratio of 0.10%. We have FUTY at 0.084%, XLU at 0.12%, FXU a more expensive 0.62, and RYU with a more expensive 0.40%. Immediately, so if you've watched some of my videos before on ETFs, you know that the first thing I'm doing is I'm gonna focus on these and see if these will be the best ones and I'm going to look at these ones and say, are they justifying how much money they're charging? Next thing we'll look at is the weighting scheme of these ETFs. Now, what is weighting? So these, the first three are market cap weighted ETFs, then FXU is tiered and RYU is equal. Now, again, this is utilities. So what do you want? You want yield, I'm gonna guess, if you're gonna be investing in utilities. So uh, the distribution yield, 3.07% for VPU, FUTY 2.85, XLU 2.95, FXU 2.13, RYU 2.63. Okay, well, the more expensive one has a lower yield, so they better have a nice return to justify the expense that they're charging you. Let's see, but right now I like the yield here of VPU, I like the yield of XLU, and FUTY has a decent yield as well. Looking at the different fundamentals, well here we have the price to earnings, uh, how are they looking? Are they similar? FXU actually has the lowest price to earnings, meaning it has the cheaper of the different fund, the cheaper of the different companies, so less expensive companies in it. Also cheaper on a price to book, a price to revenue. So essentially FXU is buying the cheaper companies. Moving on to the Morningstar ratings, we can see the overall rating first 
They all have three stars except for FXU, which has two stars, so don't like that, FXU. For the three year, we have a bunch of three stars. We have a two star for FXU, and then XLU has four stars. That's good. For the five year rating, we have a bunch of threes, a one and a two. And so, so far with a rating wise, XLU is looking pretty good. FETY is looking pretty good. VPU is looking pretty good. Moving on to the performance, let's take a look first at the five year returns of these funds. So 9.67% return for VPU. Remember VPU has the highest yield. FUTY has a 9.71% return. So it actually had a little higher of a return over five years, even though the yield was a little bit lower. So that's okay, they balance out. XLU had an even higher return with a bit of a lower yield as well. So maybe that balances out and well, this one's not looking so hot right here. Uh, this one's not looking so hot either. Let's take a look at the three year and see what's going on there. Again, these three are the best performing ones on the three year and it looks like XLU is doing the best on the three year. So they did the best on the three, they did the best on the five. Now remember XLU had the second best yield of these and it was also the third most expensive, but not by a lot. So we have to factor all of these things into consideration when we're gonna come to the final decision on which one's gonna be the best. So now let's take a look at the portfolio holdings. So the first thing we have here are the number of holdings. We have VPU with 65 holdings, FUTY with 68, XLU with 30, FXU with 42, RYU with 30. So we have some more concentrated holdings with XLU and RYU. Are you okay with that? Do you want more of a diversified holdings? I'm okay with it being more concentrated if the returns are okay and if the expense ratio is okay. I don't really necessarily care about having like hundreds of stocks in the portfolio. I really just care about it performing well and having a good expense ratio. And I also like to see which type of like weightings it is in market cap wise. So let's take a look there. So on market cap, well, there's no there's no utilities that are giant caps, so there won't this will be zero for all of them. For large cap, we have um, VPU, FUTY, XLU. They all have over 40% in large. XLU has the highest percentage of large cap. So think about that. Maybe XLU is going to have more giant companies in it. Could potentially be more stable, paying de decent dividends, maybe. Um, that's not always the case, but possibly. Uh, they have almost no small caps in, the, in it for XLU, whereas FUTY and uh, VPU has some exposure to small cap companies. So um, which do you like here? I, like, I don't dislike either of these. I think they all are pretty good in terms of the style box that these companies are fitting under. So that's fine with me. Let's go back up here and take a look at the companies real quick. So the top 10 holdings of these. So XLUS Nextera, Duke Energy, Southern Company, uh, FUTY, Nextera, Duke, Southern, VPU, Nextera, Duke, Southern. So as you can see, they're very similar. So some of the big holdings here, XLU has more percentage in the larger ones, Nextera and Duke. FUTY is 15%, 7%, so less uh, in the top two, right? So that's what I'm saying is XLU has more weighting towards the larger companies. Okay, so who's gonna be the winner here? You might be surprised. I was thinking XLU might be the one, and now I don't think that's the case. What I'm thinking is, I think Vanguard here, VPU is gonna be the winner. The Vanguard Utility Index Fund ETF shares, it's got the 0.10% expense ratio, which is the second highest just by a very small amount. But what's great about this one is it's got the highest yield at 3.07%. So that's a very big plus. And then it does have really good track record. Being that the 10 year return is actually the best out of all of these. And it actually has a good one year return compared to what I thought might be the one, which is XLU. So I like that. Anyway, basically, VPU is the winner. So next question is how did VPU do against the S&P 500? So of course the S&P 500 has definitely killed VPU. You can see here that VPU is the blue line and the S&P 500 using VOO, which is the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, um, is the yellow line, which definitely has done better than it over the past five years, over the past 10 years. It has definitely done better than it. Of course, you're not buying a utility ETF trying to beat the S&P 500. You're doing it really for yield 
probably less volatility. So maybe, you know, those are the reasons. So you're not trying to beat the S&P 500 with this. But let's take a look now at the charts. So VPU has been in the uptrend channel since around, let's say April of 2020. So it's been a while. It's been in the uptrend channel, as you can see here. Let's zoom in a little bit. You can see it's tested the uptrend line a few times. One, two, three, maybe even four times. It got really close here. Back in October, there was a nice little bounce up. And this looks to me like it is a bullish flag formation. And that is an, a continuation formation, which means it's possible that it would go through this little resistance green line here up further. And if I'm looking at the different RSI indicators and MACD indicators, what am I seeing? Well, I'm not seeing much. Uh, it's been a little flat here on RSI, not seeing anything, any signals here. And MACD is, I'm not sure if it's turning over in which direction. So I'm not getting anything from the indicators essentially. What I do see is that, well, this thing has a little bit of a bullish flag formation in my opinion, which is a good thing. But if it does continue to go down to this uptrend line, it can go a little further if it bounces. What would I do? I would say, okay, well, does it break through this line here? If it does, that might be a good place to buy, which would be 146. Does it go back down and hit this area in the 140 region? If that's so, well, maybe then it's another good time to buy because it might bounce off of this. I would do it after I saw it bounce off of the uptrend line. So anyway, that's all we have for this video. I hope you liked it. I hope it helped you find the best utility sector ETF. Let me know in the comments. Do you like the one I picked? What do you think? Are you investing in utility ETFs? I'd love to hear from you. And also hit the like button, please. If you like the video, subscribe, see future content like this. And please watch another one of my videos. It's coming up. It's on the end screen right now.